Wow, Nia DaCosta is the real deal. What a find! I haven't seen a female director operating at this level visually, maybe ever. I'm so excited about this. I was just talking about how we really need a really strong female director to come in here and mix it up and compete with everyone else. And here she is! Clearly influenced by Nolan and Kubrick, her Candyman is a stunning visual treat. Seriously, once you see this movie, you will become an instant Nia DaCosta fan. And I'm excited not just for up, her upcoming work with Marvel, damn, how do they always get everybody right away, but any movie she chooses to direct after that. She would have been such a great element for DC because I think a lot of the aesthetics here are obviously a match with the darker DC stories. So I can't believe that they let her slip through their fingers. Speaking of art, I love that Candyman shines a light not just on the art world, but artists of color, as well as people of color within that system with power, gallery owners, museum curators, etc. The film often uh, seems like a work of art itself as well, with the recurring use of shadow puppets, which they've used a lot to promote the movie too, and you already know how awesome that is, and it's very, very effective within the film itself. And the film's social commentary is not only important, but very well laid out with compelling arguments. Like really, really strong stuff. I thought that was done just as well as either, uh, these other elements. The set design is also stunning with gorgeous Chicago locations that are visually arresting and highlighted with expert craft by DaCosta and her creative team. I also applaud uh, DaCosta and producer Jordan Peele for showing the type of affluent black communities that we don't see enough in mainstream entertainment, but at the same time, not forgetting and also highlighting the past and still current struggles of that same larger community. And oh yeah, is Candyman scary? It is a horror movie after all. Well, besides the horror of the atrocities that it addresses, it also works as a scary movie. There are several very good scary scenes placed throughout the film, as well as an overall foreboding tone like Kubrick's The Shining. Oh, that library scene, that was good stuff. And the acting, wow. Again, as soon as I saw Yahya Abdul-Mateen II in the get down, I knew he was going places. And sure enough, as he continues to build an amazing career, I spotted both him and Jonathan Majors in their first big uh, projects. They're both so talented. And as Yahya Abdul-Mateen II deliver, uh, he continues to build this career, he delivers another charismatic, nuanced, and vibrant performance. His physicality as an actor is particularly strong. He has a very commanding presence on screen. He's fantastic. Tayona Paris, who will soon re-team with DaCosta for the Marvels. And you know what? She does a better job here than she did on WandaVision, where she was very good but here she's given more to do. Also, in the third act, she goes full scream queen, and she has a couple of moments that, if you, you know, with a theater audience, if you choose to go and see this in theaters, where it will be playing when it, uh, it's in theaters only when it opens this Friday, the audience is gonna go crazy. Very well designed by, uh, again, DaCosta and Peel. Uh, uh, Nathan Stewart Jurette has a supporting role as Paris's brother, and he also really pops. He's kind of like the Jamie, Cam uh, Jamie Kennedy character of the movie. And it is so nice to see a strong LGBT character, not only in a commercial black film, but a horror film as well. Some two genres that have not done as good a job with representation. Uh, Coleman Domingo also delivers strong work, while Vanessa Estelle Williams, who of course appeared in the earlier Candyman movies, makes a strong impression with just one scene, but that's all she needs. She should get more work off of this. It's also nice to see Carl Clemens Hopkins here in a small role, but I love him in Hacks. So as soon as he showed up on screen, I was like, oh, it's Carl Clemens Hopkins from Hacks. I think, I think actually he's Emmy nominated. He's so, so talented. Watch Hacks. Hacks is such a good show. Hacks is great. It's on HBO Max. Watch it. All right, so anyway, but, yes, I'm afraid there's a but. The script really falls apart, not just in the third act, but I would say halfway through, maybe even earlier. Candyman doesn't feel like a proper film, but instead, at a brisk 90 minutes, I mean, that's movie length, but for this type of movie and everything that it's dealing with, it seems like that's not enough time to me. It feels, the movie, like a long Twilight episode, which interestingly, of course, Jordan Peele brought back uh, for a while to CBS All Access. 
There's no character development. There really isn't a B storyline. It just feels incomplete. I think when you watch it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Also, the twists at the end of the film are hard to follow, and from what I could pick up, didn't seem to make any sense and weren't satisfying. There's supposed to be a final scene that's the big showstopper. And while impressive, I did like it. I kind of knew where it was going, but it did not disappoint. It's not the home run that it needs to be. I would say this big scene is like in an eight, and it really needs to be in an 11. If the, movie, if the movie had delivered an 11 ending, I think people would leave the fo- film focused on that amazing ending rather than like the film's story problems. I think like if it was an amazing ending, you'd be like, oh my God. And you wouldn't even be talking about the twist that didn't make any sense. But instead you're gonna be like, oh yeah, that was cool. Now wait, what was this? That's kind of like how, how I felt about it. However, despite that pretty big problem, I still think the new Candyman is definitely worth seeing because when it's good, it's just too good to miss. It really did at points remind me a lot of Nolan and Kubrick's best work. I mean, you're seeing the birth of potentially maybe the most successful female director to be working in the market. You gotta check it out for that alone. I mean, if you're into film at all, I mean, that enough is a reason to see it. And again, the social commentary. The social commentary it makes on topics like police brutality, mental illness, and gentrification really should be heard, especially with how effectively they're, they're addressed here. On that note, at the very end of the movie, I thought this was wonderful, a title card comes up and it invites you to visit its website, the film's website, where they've set up a page to uh, have a discussion and have links to talk about the subjects I just uh, mentioned, as well as spotlight artists of color. And I hope that you'll check that out. I did. It's really a one, it's not only a, a, a wonderful thing for the movie to do, but I think it's, it's very effective. So I'll put the, I've put the link down below as well. I, I looked through it. I didn't sense any spoilers. So I think you should, it's, and also you really kind of get, that page really represents the feel of the movie, not only aesthetically, but again, with the, you know, how it highlights these important subjects. So that's my review of Candyman, which hits theaters only this Friday before eventually hitting PVOD. Now, usually the window is 45 days, but uh, Universal's been shortening that for some films. For instance, I think Stillwater was theirs. Um, you know, some movies have been going to about 20, 25 days. So we'll see what happens with Candyman. I'm very curious to see how it does this weekend. I, it's, a, it's a very, very strong film. It's, it's too bad about the script. All right, so share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.